guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek, courtesy of Faulkner Subaru in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. Wanted to hop in the 2021 Crosstrek today because, of course, it has excellent reliability. According to Consumer Reports, a great resale value, and, of course, the best all-wheel drive system in existence right now. And there are actually several different changes for the 2021 Crosstrek as well, and, of course, I We'll be going over all of them in this video as well as testing everything out so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing i said there will be several different trim levels for the 2021 crosstrack first one being the base starting at twenty two thousand two hundred and forty five dollars premium for twenty three thousand two hundred and ninety five dollars sport which is a new trim level for the crosstrack for 2021 starting at twenty six thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars and lastly the limited which is the one we have today starting at $27,995. And so having said all that, to go along with that plethora of different trim levels, there's actually two different engine configurations for the 2021 Crosstrek. First one being a two liter horizontally opposed four cylinder boxer engine belonging to the base and premium trim levels. This one puts out 152 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 145 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels through a six speed manual or CVT. So you do get a choice with that engine. MPG numbers coming in at 28 city, 33 highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And then there is the new engine configuration for 2021 being a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed four cylinder boxer engine belonging to the sport and limited trim levels only. And so this one puts out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound feet of torque at 4,400 RPM sent to all four wheels through a CVT only with paddle shifters though, which we will be testing out in a little bit here. MPG numbers on this one, 27 city, 34 on the highway. So a little bit better than the less powerful engine setup. Go figure, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of paddle shifter or acceleration test though, I did want to mention there are some drive modes for the 2021 Crosstrek. Some of them are located on the steering wheel S and I, that is going to be your SI drive as Subaru calls it. And really that part is just a sport and intelligent drive mode, adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. But then there is also X mode and X mode is going to be specific to the sport and limited trim levels and it's going to be optional on the others and really it's just for the CVT transmission only but X mode essentially increases the all-wheel drive system engagement and uses enhanced control of the VDC system to reduce wheel spin and give you a little bit of traction in rough terrain or snowy terrain for that matter but did would also mention on top of that the sport models also are going to give you a deep snow and mud setting in addition to that so having now mentioned all of that what we are now going to do is put it in that sport driving mode by simply just pressing that S on the steering wheel there. And then I'm going to slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. And let's test out the paddle shifters now. Just wanna see how quickly they're going to react for us. Although it is essentially simulated shifting, this is a CVT, still nice to have them. So let's go ahead and give that a shot here. All right, you guys, in three, two, one, here we go. All right. Actually, they react pretty quickly. Again, this is simulated shifting, so it's not really real shifting, but they react pretty quickly. And the other cool thing about having paddle shifters, even though it's a CVT, is you can actually use them for engine braking when it starts to get cold out, starts to snow, really, I should say. So rather than actually hitting the brakes when you're going down a hill, when it's snowing, perhaps you could just use those paddle shifters to simply downshift. And the cross truck is actually going to slow down because of engine braking rather than the brakes themselves. So it kind of prevents you from sliding off the road. So another benefit to having paddle shifters on vehicles. But now let's go ahead and give back full control to the cross track. Let's do a quick little acceleration test. And let's see how this new engine configuration feels here on the new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. All right, here you go, you guys. Super nice straightaway in five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Nice. Good initial punch. Oh, that's CVT, man. It's actually not bad. There was a decent amount of acceleration there, more than I expected, quite honestly. But then again, I'm used to driving this CVT in previous years with the less powerful engine. So that was actually, it pleasantly surprised me, I guess you could say, although it's still not the quickest thing in the world, but actually not bad for the cross track i will say that but 
to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 120 feet, which is very respectable, I will say that. A lot of times with smaller SUVs, you'll get upper 120s or even 130. So 120 feet even is definitely quite nice. And braking feels has been perfectly fine for me today. No issues there. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a strut type front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back double wishbone type rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar and as far as the ride quality goes it's perfectly fine it's pretty much as expected for the cross track so i haven't any issues and pa roads can be pretty rough so no issues there for me as far as steering feel goes it's actually quite nice i just got done driving the subaru ascent i will say definitely a weightier steering feel to the cross track when you're comparing those two although you probably are comparing those two but still definitely a weightier feel to it and I like that actually and then when it comes to cabin noise pretty much as expected I will say the boxer engine can get a little bit loud when you really hit it but other than that as far as exterior noise is coming into the cabin really not all that bad just a little bit of engine noise that's all but touching then on visibility I actually could see perfectly fine out the back and that's really something Subaru always seems to nail when it comes to visibility at least because a lot of their vehicles do tend to be a little bit more on the boxier side and this is really no exception so I can see perfectly fine out the back but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek all right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. It did get a slight refresh for 2021, a little bit different from bumper, a little bit different grill design. You guys could probably already tell that, but did want to mention it. Let's go ahead and start up front of the 2021 Crosstrek here. As far as ground clearance goes, Subaru always does pretty well with that 8.7 inches up front, meaning slightly above average when you're comparing this to all the other vehicles in its class. Up front, you will find multi-reflector halogen headlights, which Come with the base premium and sport trim levels halogen fog lights coming just below that as well if you were to go with the limited like we have today you will get led steering responsive headlights meaning when you're going around a bend at night those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit anything led fog lights coming with that particular setup and of course there is an automatic feature that comes with the premium trim level and up meaning those headlights will automatically turn on for you when it detects it's starting to get dark and there is actually a unique front grille with black and gunmetal finishes if you were to go with that new trim level, the sport trim level for 2021 as well. But about rounds out the front. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the side of the cross truck here. And so then when it comes to the side, starting up top here, raised roof rails coming across the board, standard on all trim levels. Black window surrounds, also standard body color door handles as well. Black side mirrors coming with the base trim level only. That's going to be that matte black finish that you see on the front bumper. Body colored side mirrors for the premium and limited and gun metal side mirrors for the sport. So therefore it is going to differ slightly. The dependent upon which trim level that you go with there. You will actually get integrated turd signals for the sport and limited trim levels as well in those side mirrors. Did want to also mention with the sport, you're gonna get sport type wheel arch cladding. So you do have the matte black cladding on all trim levels, but it's gonna be a little more pronounced if you were to go with that new sport trim level. I did want to mention that. And take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 by seven inch alloys for the base, premium and sport. However, you will get 18 by seven inch alloys if you were to go with the limited. And of course, that is what you guys are looking at right now. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the cross truck here. And so swinging around back, of course, you have that body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper as well. And I think it has a pretty nice design around back to it. But let's now go ahead and take a look underneath. There is actually a single exhaust outlet. It, of course, is completely hidden from eyesight. But you guys know what we have to do next, as always, here is that exhaust clip.
And so, but now since we are around back of the cross track, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there is a button to unlock it on the key fob itself. There's also a button on the hatch itself, but either way, it is a manual lift gate. So simply just lift up underneath there, and go ahead and open it up. Once opened up though, cargo capacity comes in at 20.8 cubic feet behind that second row seat, I should say. With the rear seats folded down, that comes in at 55.3 cubic feet. There of course is a 60-40 split. That is how you're gonna be able to fold that down. There are four cargo tie down hooks in that cargo area, two grocery bag hooks. If you go with the premium trim level and up, you will in addition to that get a cargo tray area and a cargo cover as well. So I did want to mention that too. And make our way to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.5 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Also for the sport and limited trim levels in the back, they will get dual rear USB charging ports. That's definitely important if you have kids back there. Rear center armrest with dual cup holders coming with the limited trim level only. And I did wanna also mention there is some LED roof lighting in the back there as well. To make our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the base and premium. You will find a soft text upholstery with yellow contrast stitching for that new sport trim level, and then a leather finish to the seating with orange contrast stitching if you were to go with the limited. And that's why we have the orange stitching there today. But then if you wanted a power driver seat that is gonna be specific to the limited trim level, and heated front seats are gonna come with the premium trim level and up, and those heated seat buttons are located just in front of the cup holders there. And overall, all seats are actually plenty comfy. I have had no issues in my short test drive today, so perfectly fine there. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up. And again, with that stitching contrast, you will get the yellow for the sport and the orange for the limited like you're seeing right now. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Lock, unlock, and that unlock button, by the way, is the Subaru logo in the middle in case anybody was curious about that. But it is essentially all keyless entry if you were to go with the sport or limited trim levels, and that is gonna be an optional feature on the premium, which means you can keep the key in your pocket, walk up to the cross track, simply put your foot on the brake, and that engine start button then is located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer all the way to the right, and there is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side, giving you a couple different things to scroll through, like a digital speedometer, for example, trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, also which driving mode you were in as well, that is gonna display up there. Another nice feature I found is it will display the speed limit of any given road as well. So overall, pretty much everything you could possibly want up on that digital section of the gauges. But then make your way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is going to be optional for the premium trim level and up. We do of course have that option there today. Automatic climate control comes standard for all trim levels. And overall, I actually do like the trim in this one. There is some plastic around the door handle and around the shifter as well, but at least the plastic around the door handle kind of simulates a carbon fiber type look, although it's not real carbon fiber, of course, but it definitely looks pretty nice there. Just in front of the shifter, you have a decent amount of storage along with two USB charging ports, an auxiliary port, and a 12 volt power outlet actually as well. Just behind the shifter, you have your X mode button of course along with the heated seat buttons and dual cup holders and within that center armrest of course you are going to find a decent amount of storage there are also two more usb charging ports any 12 volt power outlet in there as well so overall when it comes to interior quality it's pretty much as expected some of the extra stuff you get with the limited you get home light controls for up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror and you also get a compass in the upper right hand corner of that rear view mirror as well but overall interior quality is actually plenty fine for me i've had no issues there taking a look now at the tech display there's actually two of them when it comes to the top one or the smaller one you can actually adjust what is on that top display by simply just pressing the info button on the left side of the steering wheel there but that's going to give you things like what day of the week it is actual date itself there's your outside temperature there's safety information your approach angles which i thought was pretty cool we are kind of in an off-road vehicle so i like seeing that there's some weather information as well a little bit of navigation information 
information, radio settings, the list goes on, but I did like that that was there. But now making our way to the main tech display, 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the base, premium, and sport trim levels. However, that limited trim that we have today, you are now looking at an eight inch color touchscreen display. But having said that though, the features aren't really going to change really all that much, I should say. You're still gonna get Bluetooth and audio streaming on either setup. You're still gonna get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay on either setup as well. That's a big one, because therefore, if you have a smartphone, you simply hook it up to the Crosstrack, and therefore you have free navigation display up on that screen even for the 6.5 inch display so that's pretty cool factory navigation system if you wanted it although you don't need it is going to be optional on the limited you can check out your climate control settings up there as well and your radio settings and by the way when it comes to the sound system here you will get four speakers for the bass six speakers for the premium trim level and up actually and then there's an eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system that is optional just for the limited, we do have that option here today. I wanted to mention it. 432 watts on this one. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, really, really good. I liked that. There was a good bit of bass. Clarity was plenty fine, but really, that's plenty of a sound system for the cross track, I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the cross track in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Subaru cross track is an IIHS top safety pick. That's always a good start. Front side, side gear and airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. Of course, you got the symmetrical all wheel drive system. That's really a safety feature in itself as well. But here's where it really gets good when it comes to Subaru EyeSight. And Subaru EyeSight is gonna come on the Sport and Limited. It's gonna be optional on the base and premium trims. But essentially what that includes is a pre-collision braking system which is excellent on the Subaru, I will say that. Pre-collision throttle management, lane departure and sway warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering as well. And then if you go with the sport trim level and up, you get high beam assist in addition to that. And then the limited is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, which by the way is optional on the premium and sport trim levels. Limited is also going to add reverse automatic braking as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Subaru Crosstrek, great reliability ratings. You guys can check out consumer reports for that that will back that up best all-wheel drive system in existence that's partly due because Subaru of course was legendary and still is legendary when it comes to rally racing in the snow and dirt so therefore you got that going for you great safety in this one and Subaru really takes pride in its safety I'm constantly reading and watching things about how Subaru loves striving for the very best safety ratings on everything love the new engine for 2021 that we had today it's definitely more powerful than the other one it is a night and day difference although it's still not the quickest thing in the world but that's why you got the WRX for anyways and by the way the base engine hits 60 in around nine seconds flat so that's what i'm saying it really is a night and day difference when it comes to the engine configurations very practical cabin here i like the layout i love the orange stitching i'm sure i would have loved the yellow stitching in the sport as well but overall an extremely solid pick here when you put all that together but let me know what you guys think of the cross track in the comments section below that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>